My brothers and sisters, what is going on? Still sermon in the house. Sunday afternoon, another video. Another week, another terrible Steeler loss, another recap, and another video about me just getting real ticked off about them. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Links are posted in the box below. I mean, yeah, what'd you expect? What did you expect? 35 to 13. Eagles just absolutely take us to the woodshed, maraud us, torture us, murder us, rape us. I just did whatever they wanted to do with us today. The losing streak in Philly continues as we have dropped 10 in a row now in Philly. Have not won there since 1965, so really that's nothing new. But it just seems like every time, even when I don't expect this team to win, every time, they, you just think, you know, my gosh, these guys just can't get any worse. They can't perform any more careless. It just happens. And I don't know where to start with today. I really don't have much to say about today because I expected this. There's a reason that I said Philly was going to be my lock for this week as much as I didn't want to do it, but there's a reason for it. This team is undefeated. This team's coming off a bye. They outclass us and outmatch us and outprepare us in every single way, shape, and form. From the very first drive that the Pittsburgh Steelers had today, except for that touchdown where Kenny Pickett um, gave the end around to Chase Claypool. And uh, Chase Claypool had a passing touchdown today. Our only passing touchdown today was from Chase Claypool to Derek Watt. You know, just uh, that just shows you how predictable this offense is and just how unoriginal it is. Honestly, this team is just so boring. And I'll get in on Kenny Pickett later. This team is just so boring and so lifeless and just so bland and uninteresting. It, you know, it really is. It's like playing that idiot in Madden that just does the same play every single time. That's what Matt Canada's offense is. That's what Mike Tomlin's offense is. Predictable, unoriginal, uncreative. They just go out there, do the bare minimum. I mean, they were showing sparks of creativity early on in the game, hence that touchdown from Chase Claypool on fourth down from fourth and goal at the goal line, and he threw it to Derek Watt. So there were some sparks of creativity, but right after that, right back to where we were. This offense scored only 13 points, only... Seven points today. Seven points. They should have scored more, but because Tomlin likes to sit up, you know, likes to go into every single post-game and pre-game conference or whatever and goes like, well, we don't live in our fears. Yeah, you know what, Tomlin? No one wants to hear this anymore, Tomlin. No one does, and no one believes you anymore. Because if you didn't live in your fears and the standard is the standard, which our standard is not winning a Super Bowl. Our standard is not winning the AFC North. Our standard is not playing 60 minutes of football. That is not your standard, Mike Tomlin. Your standard is going out there and getting completely outplayed and playing scared every single game. Because that's what Mike Tomlin is. He's a great public speaker, but too bad he's a mediocre game planner. That's all he is. He's all talk. Talk, talk, talk. And I'm tired of it. We don't live in our fears. Yeah, I guess that's why we're kicking field goals down multiple scores when it's fourth down. You got nothing to lose. There are times when kicking a field goal makes sense. Like, say, when you're up 10 or more points on your opponent. You're down, you're down 14 points. 
and you kick a field goal at the goal line. You're down 18 points. You need points. And you decide to kick a 37-yard field goal. But this team doesn't give up, right? Maybe Ryan Clark and Tyler Boyd are right about you, Tomlin. You do give up. Well, you know what, Canada and Tomlin? Why don't you just have the entire offense just take knees for the entire game? Because pretty much that's what your offense is. This team is boring. They are uninventive. They are unoriginal. And they are scared. The very first play, from the very first play I see every week from this team, they play scared. They are playing prevent offense and prevent defense the entire the entire way. Oh no, wait, I'm I'm wrong. They were playing man to man today. Why is that? Because Okella Witherspoon got absolutely destroyed today by AJ Brown. AJ Brown had a hat trick today. Three touchdowns on us. Every single one of them times that I saw that I saw Jalen Hurts throw a deep pass to his right side, I knew somehow, some way, our secondary was going to get torched. And a real bang up job right there by Kevin Colbert, you know, because this guy is such a master at drafting corners. I want you Steeler fans to answer me something in the comments below when I ask you this. Aside from TJ Watt, can you name me one player that this franchise under Kevin Colbert in the last half decade has drafted, developed, scouted, and brought to the NFL and made them into a star? Outside of TJ Watt. Not even a star, a really good player. Can you name one other guy? Juju Smith-Schuster's probably the closest one, but he's not on the team anymore. He's lighting it up in Kansas City. George Pickens is probably the closest one, but he's just a rookie. Pat Frymuth is probably another good one, but he's just in his second year. The common denominators with those two is that they have it's that they're too early into their careers. This defense just got manhandled all day. Like I said, Akella Witherspoon, what a major letdown this guy's been. Now I know why now I know why he was a backup in San Francisco. This guy was getting being put on A.J. Brown all day. I don't get you, Tomlin. I don't get you, Terrell Austin. Why would, why would you be so insistent on playing soft zone defense against Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle all week last week, but now you're confident enough that Akella Witherspoon can cover a guy like A.J. Brown? I don't get you. Did you see the way that he got manhandled all day today? It wasn't even close. Complete mismatch on the right side. And Gunnar Olszewski, you can get the hell off the team, man. How are you a kick returner? And you don't know that when a punt is trying to be, is, is close to your own end zone, you don't return it. You either fall down on the ball and cover it up or you let the other team down it or you take the touchback altogether. You don't scoop it up in your red zone and try to make a return on it. This team just has no football IQ at all. None. No football IQ from the schemes. No football IQ from the play calling. No football IQ from Basic fundamentals. This team doesn't execute the most basic plays. And that's why we're 2-6. and six, The worst record in the AFC. You can call it a timely buy for us because if there's any silver lining, it's TJ Watt is most likely going to be healthy after the buy. And... I'm just going to say it. Kenny Pickett didn't play great today. He really didn't. 
I'm trying to lay off on him, and I'm being as patient as I can with him. But there are times where you have to put a little bit of blame on the quarterback. And Kenny Pickett did not play great today. I'm not going to kill Kenny Pickett. But there were so many passes today where he just tried to force it. He tried to do too much. QB bootleg. Yeah, let's try to squeeze it into double coverage right there. Kenny Pickett should have thrown about three more interceptions today. And he did throw another interception today where the ball was tipped by a Philly defender and was intercepted. He overshot Pat Fryermuth. Kenny Pickett got sacked six times today. And about half of them, he, he w walked right into the pass rush. And isn't it hilarious that Kenny Pickett, our quarterback, has more rushing yards than Najee Harris. Isn't that pathetic? At this point, I would just make Jalen Warren the number one starter because when we're running the ball, we actually run it with, with Jalen Warren. He has that explosion factor. He has that pop ability. He's able to get downfield with the run. And we've seen it over and over again with him. Najee Harris, am I ready to give up on him? Not exactly. But it's getting harder and harder to say, oh yeah, Najee fought for extra yards today. Najee made something out of nothing on a screen pass today. Najee did this. Najee did that. It's getting harder and harder to get excited about that because it's the same thing every week. It's been how many games for this guy? It's been how many snaps for this guy to figure out that he needs to start opening up more holes. And the thing that did it for me for Najee in this game in particular was when he caught a screen pass and there was a big enough hole for him to get a first down. And instead of look, all he has to do is, to, is look straight ahead and he has that hole for an easy first down. Instead, he freezes in time and space and allows himself to get tackled short at the line of scrimmage. And then he gets the first down the very next play, and instead of running out of bounds, he tries to hurdle over a defender and try to, and try to do too much. How many times is he going to do that? It doesn't work. And Steel Twins, shout out to them. If you're in their stream, shout out to them. They brought up an interesting point with Najee Harris. And am I completely on board with it? Not yet, but I'm getting closer to it now that they mentioned it. I think it would be wise for, Steeler, for the Steelers to start listening to trade offers for him. Because here's the thing. He's just not getting the job done. He averages 47 yards on the ground. Is it all on Najee Harris? No, a lot of it has to do with the offensive line and the run blocking. I get that. But when Najee is missing wide open gaps and not being elusive and dancing around like that, that is on him. That has nothing to do with schemes. That has nothing to do with the O-line. That's on Najee. And he's just not getting it done. Jalen Warren is being more productive with him. And then going into this offseason, we have like no maneuverability when it comes to free agency because we used all our capital with free agency this past spring. So we need as much draft capital as we can get because this is an, an important offseason for Omar Khan. So, hey, I'm not completely on board with it yet, but I definitely understand the Steelers should start listening to offers for Najee Harris. Or you can just do the logical thing and get rid of Matt Canada. Look, Halloween's tomorrow night, right? Trick-or-treating's tomorrow night. You guys should just go home for the bye week. And tomorrow night, you, you guys shouldn't even hand out Halloween candy tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, you should just hand out dollars to all those kids. Because you did not earn your paycheck at all today. 
There's a difference between rebuilding and being competitive and rebuilding and not giving a crap about what you're doing out there. Look at teams like Jacksonville. Look at teams like Detroit. Are they the most talented teams in the league? Absolutely not. But every single week, they're going out there and they are giving 110% effort every single game. They don't have a good record for sure, but they will give every one of their opponents effort. All this team does, punch in, punch out, collect my paycheck, drive home my fancy Mercedes and my million dollar mansion with my 10 bathrooms and my and my hot wife and have her cook me dinner, watch the highlights on TV and call it a day. This team doesn't care. There is no chemistry with this team at all. There is no communication with the quarterbacks and the receivers at all today. And that all stems with our head coach and Mike Tomlin. All he does is just sit there and talk, talk, talk. But we never see any results on the field. Oh, we do see results, all right, Tomlin. We see this team being the most boring friggin' team in the league. You get blown out by your in-state rival and you've lost 10 in a row to them in their venue. Apparently, you have no pride for the state of Pennsylvania. I don't even live in Pennsylvania anymore and I have more pride in that state than Yin's guys do. That's for damn sure. So, that's really all I gotta say. There isn't a whole lot to say. Aside from me just rambling on for 17 minutes now. We lose 35-13, 2-6 halfway through the year. We have our bye week. And honestly, I don't even know if we can beat the Saints. Because the Saints just shut out the Raiders today. And we know the Raiders have a good offense. You got a long nine weeks coming, Steelers. A long nine weeks coming. Get it together. For real. As always, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Links are posted below. Steel Sermon, check it on out for the day. May God be with you all.